All right, so no fussing about. We got something very, I would say, cool for you guys to find out about if you have the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II and maybe this is your first time ever looking for lenses for your camera and you're not willing to shell out a whole bunch of money just to get a decent lens for video content creation, especially on YouTube or even live streaming. And maybe you're just sitting the camera on a, I would say tripod or something attached to your desk or something. You want something that's gonna be able to capture your space. So editing squid here, the astute of you might notice that my shutter speed is completely wrong for the type of video that I'm doing. And the reason why was because last time I used the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, I was using it for time lapses and doing a different camera angle within the office and it required me to change my shutter speed, but I never changed it back once I hooked it back up for my talking head angle. And the reason why I forgot to do all that was because after that stuff, me and my wife went into another city that's like an hour away. We ended up getting a car, super long weekend and everything. I forgot to change some of the settings. so. That's why if I move my hands around and stuff like that, it looks a little wonky and weird. And it's because I forgot to change the shutter speed back to the appropriate shutter speed for that angle. And that's because I'm stupid. So please enjoy the rest of the video. Just keep that in mind. It's not the lenses. It's because I'm stupid and actually have the focal lengths that you are looking for. Well, there's a lot of recommendations when it comes to the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I and II or just Sony APS-C cameras out there. A lot of bigger camera content creators, they will only recommend certain brands like Sigma or Sony. And respectively, just putting it out there, I am not a camera person. I am not somebody who knows all the specifics and the minute details of like cameras and lenses and all that stuff. I'm coming from the standpoint where it's most likely your standpoint. You're just a content creator trying to use this tool to do your job and you just want the tool to be able to do it. You don't care about the little, like I said, minute details or anything like that. You just want something that is going to be able to produce the type of content that you're trying to produce. And with that being said, I'm gonna recommend some lenses that you might have heard about if you did your research, but I'm sure there's plenty of people who are just picking up a camera for the very first time, and it might be the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I or II, and they're looking into lenses and they're doing research, and they're seeing a lot of people recommending prime lenses. Now, prime lenses are pretty i would say standard and good for people who are pretty much going to be sitting in their office or youtube studio and just recording videos and vlogging some people might want that focal length of being able to zoom and have the zoom lens to be able to go ahead and capture different types of content or wherever maybe for vlogging or they're not sure which more they're going to do as far as sitting in home or going outside so having those you know variable i would say ranges with the zoom lens is going to be really nice but they are a tad more expensive the one i'm going to recommend and i'll leave a video linked in the description to somebody who's broken the lens down in a more i would say scientific matter or a more professional like use case scenario if you were to use this lens in that way and they talk about all the pros and the cons and stuff about the lens and you can read the comments and stuff of the video like i did but i'll put on screen what it is i'm not even going to try to say the name because i'll just butcher it but in comparison to the other lenses out there this one for vlogging and hand holding and you know having that wide i would say field of view and everything that most people think is sought out for i would say this lens is going to cover you and it's going to be cheaper than i would say the comp competing alternatives and yes it, it has its pros and cons but it, mostly it's going to not stack up to those bigger brand names when it comes to lenses but it's going to get the job done, especially if you're just uploading to YouTube. Nobody's going to really care. And that's the whole emphasis behind this video is that nobody who's watching your YouTube videos or maybe even your live streams is going to care if you had a Sigma lens, Sony lens, Yongnu lens, what people are not going to care where that stuff is going to come more appropriate as far as caring about the chromatic aberrations or any other cons of a budget lens versus a top tier lens like a sony g master lens or something like that is if again i've said it multiple times on the channel if you're doing client work if you're doing something that's going to be put on a big screen or you're going to be turning it into um, something for a business or corporate like maybe you're doing real estate footage or something you know what i'm saying but again if you're just a content creator uploading youtube videos and like i said nobody's going to really care if you're using the sigma 16 millimeter lens 
f1.4 or the yang new 16 millimeter lens f1.8 i just swapped to it or wherever and yes there's probably some camera settings that i could probably tweak a little bit more because again i just took the lens off and put the other one on but it's like nobody's gonna really care you know what i'm saying if you're doing videos like me just uploading to youtube maybe taking some photos uploading to instagram casually or wherever like i said unless you're doing corporate client work where you're gonna have to turn in this stuff and maybe images have to be blown up it has to be pristine and perfect and everything like that unless you're doing something like that and you're getting paid like astronomical money or whatever for what you're doing then of course get the g masters get a full frame camera you know get all this stuff. of course you know what i'm saying get the right tool for the right job like i keep trying to tell people but for those who you know like i said are doing videos like me who are primarily going to be focusing on you know what kind of content they're making and it's it just they need something that's going to be good enough to capture that field of view that they're looking for and be able to represent their content in a good way then why would you pay 400 and something dollars for this when you can get the yang new 16 or 11 millimeter lens for roughly like i think 320 i paid for them or whatever that's that's adding tax you know what i'm saying after purchasing on amazon where on amazon right now i put the screenshot of price that i found the 16 millimeter for but it was like 400 and something dollars and you know what i'm saying and because i've been covering the sony zv e10 mark ii so much i've been seeing people you know get that camera or get the mark one because it's on sale or used because a new one came out and then they'll go out and get the sony 11 millimeter lens and you see the price between that and this and it's like yes there's some you know if you zoom in and pixel peep and you know sharpness around the center versus the edges and focus pooling and all that stuff but it's like people are not going to do that when when they're doing stuff like they're not going to be doing that stuff you know what i'm saying like like i said that's that's for the more advanced people who are doing like like i said more professional work people who are doing something like this they're going outside putting their camera on a tripod and talking to it you know what i'm saying they're holding it on the selfie stick like people are not going to care they're going to want to know about the field of view the color rendition and stuff like that and if they're in focus that that's all they're really going to care you know what i'm saying and since sony lenses are really i mean sony cameras are really good with focus and stuff like that they're probably going to use like product showcase or something like that and just be like oh look at this and then put it down like it's just it's so weird to me and these new content creators are looking at these bigger content creators who are suggesting the sony and sigma and all this other stuff and it's like they they just got into content creation you know what i'm saying they don't care about chromatic aberration or whatever they're just gonna listen to these people because they're like oh this person's more knowledgeable than i am and they're saying that this stuff is super important when all actuality it's not important to that content creator who's gonna potentially pick up the gear so they're gonna end up being led to pick up more expensive lenses or accessories or whatever when all actuality the young new 16 or 11 millimeter lens would be perfectly fine for them and they could have saved that money for other camera accessories or just saved it in their bank with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the young new 11 millimeter lens in this you know scenario being like on a tripod or wherever and talking i'm not going to go outside for one is over 100 degrees outside for two uh, my son is up and my wife is watching him and anytime you try to go outside or wherever he goes crazy because he wants to go outside and we ain't trying to deal with all that plus i am still tired we got a car yesterday and if you ever purchased a car you know you sit there all day at the dealership so your boy just trying to do this video real quick and fast in a hurry so speaking of which let's take a look at the young new 11 millimeter lens so i'm so upset the elgato software crashed so i didn't record any of the audio just the video and then i tried to re-record this portion but apparently elgato had all my sound sources muted once i reopened the program and i didn't catch that it's it's more of a headache than necessary what i was going to say is that this field of view is super wide you probably can tell on the sides of the actual video wherever it looks a little bit blurry it's not as sharp i would say it almost looks like i have a green screen over here a little bit um what i would say with that is i don't know if it's just the actual focal length of the fov or wherever it might be because when you get closer to these kind of lenses you can see my fingers distort and that's what you're going to get um because it's going to be such a wide field of view but in my personal opinion i think it looks good the only downsides that i noticed with this and doing this and I will go ahead and show the footage that I was trying to record earlier is that when I switched the camera to 4k 60 I did notice that it was doing a lot of focus breathing and focus hunting and stuff and when I swapped it to 4k 30 and 4k 24p I didn't have any of those focus huntings focus breathing whatever you want to call it um so again I don't know if it's because of 
you know, that mode or it's because of the lens or whatever and it being budget, et cetera. But the whole thing about that is that a lot of people is not going to be able to watch your 4K 60, 120 or 30 FPS, you know, footage anyways, because a lot of people and it's been shown through a whole bunch of surveys, product trends as far as watching what people are purchasing and stuff like that and studies and everything. A lot of people don't have the monitors, the TVs, the gaming consoles, the, you know, PCs, whatever to actually consume, you know, 4K 30, 4K 60, 4K 120 footage anyways. Um, the thing about it is that some people are going to say, well, there's a lot of people that can do it. I can do it specifically myself. And it's like, yes, you might be able to do it and you might know some other people who can, but the vast majority of the people on this planet are still consuming content at 1080p, 60 frames per second, regardless of what you want to believe. And you think that you must shoot in 4k 60 in all actuality, most people who are probably watching your content or going to watch your content is probably watching it in 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's just the truth. That's the that, that's just like a literal truth, regardless of what you think, regardless of what other people tell you that you're just shooting these higher resolutions. It's just been proven time and time again through studies. Like I said, you can do your own research and look it up yourself. Most people are still using stuff that's 1080p, 60 frames per second. So to me, not being able to put the camera into you know 60 fps and not having to worry about dealing with that focused breathing or hunting that's perfectly fine for me because again i didn't pay 500 and something dollars for it again i don't know if the sony lens would do that with this camera putting it in 60 fps who who knows but i know for a sure fact i wasn't about to pay you no know, almost 600 dollars wherever for that lens just to see if that happens or not you know what i'm saying i'm happy with this you know paying like half of the cost again this field of view i think is really nice it would have been very helpful when i do big product reviews like the Bay backdrop that i did a review on back there and i think this focal range is really really good to capture a whole room what i would say most people probably could get by with the yangu 16 millimeters inside and then if they wanted to go outside and vlog or wherever they can use the yangu 11 millimeter lens me personally, I'm probably still going to use this at the as, as for this angle or wherever. I think it's wide enough. I, I like it. I think it creates an interesting shot. And on top of that, what I would do is probably pull the camera down a little bit on the little tripod uh, pole and angle it a little bit to not catch her as much ceiling. But overall, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I think it's really cool. I think it, it makes an interesting shot or wherever for a main camera, uh, I would say talking head shot, in my personal opinion, you know what I mean, versus a... 16 millimeter and again you know your use case scenario better than i do so hopefully you know these comparing the 16 millimeters as well as the 11 millimeters you could see the differences and everything like that and be able to make a little bit closer to that informed decision but you're probably going to want want to watch those links down below to the other channels that go more in depth on these lenses with that being said if you want to pick up these lenses or wherever i'll have affiliate links down in the description below it helps out the channel and no cost to you and with that if you found this video informative or helpful in any way then please consider leaving a like or a comment down below it helps me out greatly and if you want to take it that even further step consider subscribing or becoming a membership member here on the channel that would help me out greatly as well but either way hopefully you have a squid day god bless you and yours and i'll see you guys in the next one much love